everybody and welcome back to Gaming on Cafe. My name is Isaac and we are back for episode 4 of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved. Last episode we made ourselves the Blast Furnace as well as the Thermionic Fabricator and the Carpenter. And since the end of last episode I have spent quite a bit of time in this world. First of all I've gone ahead and organized our little island a little bit. Again I still don't intend to stay here for that much longer but I figured for now we might as well clean it up a little bit and give us a bit more space to, uh, to work with. And I've also spent a ton of time mining since the end of last episode and spent a ton of time with the Tinker Smelt Ray processing all of our ores and making sure that we have them all in ingot form. So I present to you my chest. We have quite a lot of iron, quite a lot of silver, a fair bit of gold, loads of lead, and a surprisingly small amount of copper. But uh, I did do a lot of my mining down at level 12, which uh, is not where copper spawns. Copper, I believe, is like level 40 and up. So that's why we don't have too much copper but the main thing is that we have 25 diamonds which means that we can finally get started with some of the machinery in feed the beast infinity evolved so uh, one of the things that i want to work towards uh, as like our next objective is getting a tinker's construct hammer that's a hammer that lets us mine in a three by three area which is going to make mining so much easier and way less grindy in terms of getting things like diamonds, redstone, iron, etc. And the way that we get that is using the tool forge. Now, the tool forge, as I showed before is a lot harder to get. There are two ways to do it. This way is a bit more of a magic oriented way with things like blood magic, witchery, and thumbcraft, but it seems way more expensive to do it this way than it does to do it this way. So guess what? We're going to do it this way. Uh, but to make it, we need four dense refined iron plates, which are made by compressing refined iron plates, which can be made by rolling steel in a metal former. So we need a metal former. I have gone ahead and cooked up a bunch of steel since last episode. Uh, I didn't want to use all of my cold cooks, so I did make quite a lot of charcoal but i could tell you this now charcoal does not last very long at all it takes multiple pieces of charcoal to uh, to get one piece of steel because charcoal only lasts for 1600 ticks uh, and oh sorry blast furnace fuel only lasts for 300 ticks and it takes a full minute for a piece of iron to turn into a piece of steel so you will need multiple pieces of charcoal per piece of steel so uh, prepare to do a lot of tree chopping but back to the metal farmer. To get this, we are going to need quite a bit of stuff. Mainly, to get the basic machine casing, we need an iron chipset, which is made in the assembly table, which is why we needed so many diamonds to begin with, because the assembly table and the lasers that it requires require a ton of diamonds. So to make this, we need four, five diamonds just to make this. Thankfully, we can make this in a crafting table, but we are going to have to make the golden gear in the smelt tray. And then we're also going to need some obsidian. And then the lasers, of course, require even more obsidian and even more diamonds in the form of the diamondite electron tubes, which require diamonds, redstone, and glass in the thermionic fabricator. So the first thing that we're going to do today is we're going to grab three diamonds. We're going to make a diamond pickaxe. Ooh, I'm going to check that we can use it first. If we can, that is going to be a bit of a waste only used for crafting okay we're not gonna use that at all because that is a terrible idea and you in fact cannot use that to mine obsidian so question time i wonder if i upgrade my iron pickaxe using a diamond does that allow me to mine obsidian it increases the mining level to obsidian which I think, and it also increases the durability, which is nice, because I've used way too many pieces of iron fixing this thing. But I think that means that I should now be able to mine obsidian with this iron pickaxe. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab our bucket, and I'm going to head down under, uh, underground and try and find a lake of lava. We could use the one that we have over, uh, kind of just over there, but I like having that nearby to fill up the smell tray. So, instead, I'm going to go away. I'm going to try and find a pool of lava, pour some water over it, get some obsidian, mine in that obsidian and I'll be back in a second. Alright, so quite a bit of obsidian mining later. We now have 14 obsidian, which should be enough, if my calculations are correct, to get one assembly table and four buildcraft lasers. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to make four right away, because we I don't think we're going to have anywhere near enough power to power four of them, but... 
it should be enough to do all that. So uh, I did go ahead and make uh, all of the ingots melt down in the smeltery. I don't know what that means. I was going to say, uh, I did go ahead and put the uh, ingots into the smeltery so that we have enough to make an iron and therefore a gold and therefore a diamond cast. We didn't actually need to put iron in there, I'm now realizing. Uh, you used to have to upgrade from iron to gold. Now you could just make gold directly. So that was a bit of a waste of iron. But I know for a fact that we do need an iron gear uh, a little later on. So that's fine. Now all we need to do is surround our golden gear with some diamonds. One, two, three, four. And then combine that diamond gear with another diamond, some obsidian, and finally a piece of redstone. Thank you very much. Which, if we stick in here, gets us... Oh, uh, what? <laughs> what? Assembly... Is it not redstone? Um, oh, it's the wrong way around. An assembly table. Nice. So, we can put that down wherever we would like. For now, I will put it, uh, maybe like here or something. I think I'm gonna put the lasers like there. And then behind it, we're gonna have something that can power the lasers. But I'll put that there for now. And then, of course, our first laser, uh, I believe, looks something like this. But we do need some of the diamondite electron tubes in order to make this happen. Because these two slots are, are where they go. So, let's go back over to laser. And to make these, we're gonna need to use the thermionic fabricator. Some diamonds, some redstone, and some glass. Now, the question is I do have some glass actually that's good let's put that in there so we have to put these in here you'll notice it didn't actually take any off me when I put those down like I've got 59 I've still got 59, and that's because the way that this works is you have to put the diamonds in here and the redstone in here in order for it to use them. We do then need to put glass in. You can put glass blocks in, glass panes. Any of that stuff will work. Uh, I think it might even need a little bit of lava to heat these up, although I might be lying to you there. Uh, but we do need one thing we do need for definite is some power. So there were a couple of suggestions in the little, like, Feed the Beast expert manual over here, and I think the easiest for us to make right off the bat is going to be a survivalist generator, which is where that iron gear comes in. It's not the best. It produces five redstone flux per tick, which is nowhere near enough. Uh, and especially for the lasers, each laser can carry 40 redstone flux per tick. So even making more than one, if we're using survivalist generators, is not worth it at all. But... For now, it's going to have to work, and we're going to have to use a ton of cobblestone to make all of these furnaces. Thankfully, I did a ton of strip mining, and we have an absolute load of cobblestone. So, let's go ahead and make a bunch of the compressed stuff. And uh, we might as well go ahead and make another one with that. And finally, another set like that. I say finally, we're going to need even more, so that's not final at all. But we can do that. That gets us 22, which should be enough to make our two furnaces. Then we can go ahead and get ourselves three blocks of coal, which we are able to make, thankfully. So we'll go ahead and do something like this. One, two, three. These things are real expensive for five redstone flux per take. And then a piston, which needs some oak. So we'll go ahead and grab some of that real quick, as well as some cobblestone, some iron, and some redstone. We are missing iron. That's fine. We've got quite a lot of iron. We could throw you in like that. There, uh, why, why you no work? Oak, cobblestone, redstone, iron. What am I missing? I'm missing cobblestone. Is what I'm missing. Uh, we need a bit more of the stuff. But there we go. That gets the piston. Uh, I might try and make another one of these uh, to speed things up a little while in the future. But for now, that gets the survivalist generator, which we can put down. Uh, I guess like here. Uh, I'm hoping that will pass power right through into this. Although I'm not a hundred percent sure if it will. We might have to make some form of conduits. Although the fact that it's not producing any here makes me think that it is working a bit. <laughs> it does say it requires redstone flux to work still. But that power has to be going somewhere. And it's not going into the power section here. So I have to assume that this is working somewhat. Okay, so again, a little while later, I've gone ahead and made two more of these survivalist generators, and finally something is happening within the thermionic fabricator. Uh, it's heating up in this little bar in the middle. Once it got to this bar, uh, one of our glass did turn into liquid glass, but now I think it's going to have to fill all the way up before we actually get our four electron tubes. The good news is that these survival generators are absolutely fantastic in terms of efficiency. They produce five redstone flux per tick for 13 minutes per piece of coal. So every single piece of coal will last 30 minutes so the last a heck of a long time which is kind of fantastic so i'm gonna leave this running for a while and whilst we wait to that, for that to finish we can actually start working on some of the other uh 
parts that we need to actually make our metal farmer because um, only the only the casing in the middle actually requires an iron chipset. The rest of it is quite simple IC2 stuff. So to make all of this, we're going to need a couple of things. First of all, the toolbox should be fairly easy to make. We're going to need two chests because we do need two of those toolboxes. So I'll take both of those. We're then going to need a fair bit of bronze, I think. Is that bronze? It is bronze. Do I have any bronze lying around still? We have two, which uh, for those who remember is enough to make one plate. Uh, and one plate does make one casing. So we're going to need two, four, six, eight, ten, twenty bronze in order to get this to work. So let's take all of our copper and tin and see how much we can make over here. We need twenty, which means, ooh, what's that? That's one, uh, that's four, Four, five, six. Ugh, that's not right. That's four, eight, twelve. Because we'll go one, two, three. I think that's right. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And then we need to put three more copper in and one more tin. Okay, that should make sixteen copper, if I'm not mistaken. Also, I didn't mention this at all, but what I did between episodes is I put another smeltery drain on here as well as made a casting basin uh, just so we can pull out more ingots at once. Uh, basically, the casting basin allows you to pull out a full block at once, and I was pulling out like two blocks at a time of iron because we were making so much flipping iron. Also, let's sleep because it is getting really dark. Okay, let's not die to that skeleton. Do not kill me, please. That's made 12. It should make 16 when that goes in. Then let's put three more and you in. That should get us up to 20, which will be very nice indeed. We're then going to need a tree tap, which looks a little bit like this, because in order to make the electronic circuit, we need some insulated copper cables, which are made using rubber and copper. Now, actually, we might have a little bit of... Um, oh, we've got five rubber from mine factory reloaded so we might actually not need all that much although it's probably you can probably mix and match between them let's go and quickly kill this skeleton who's hopefully not gonna be able to kill us oh the knockback's too big no kill him kill him kill him oh wow i'm i'm really surprised he didn't get us uh, anyway the tree tap over here allows us to get rubber from industrial craft 2 by just right clicking wherever you see this little sticky resin on a tree thank you very much is there any more? This one's not too nice. I'll take both of those. And then all we got to do is smelt up this sticky resin in any kind of furnace. And that will get us one industrial craft rubber. That gets us six, which is more than enough to make six uh, copper cables to make our processor. So let's go ahead and stick this in one of our furnaces. Uh, we'll also check on our thermionic fabricator to see how that's doing. Uh, you can go in the bottom there. We'll get some more fuel in the form of oak wood. And you can go in there. Cool. Uh, that is it's getting there. Slowly but steadily, it is getting there. It will get there eventually. Uh, and then the bronze should be done by now. And it is. We've got 20 bronze there. So we can pull out uh, two blocks. And then we're going to have to pull out a couple of ingots. So we'll throw you like that and start pulling a few of those out. Let me put this cast back with the rest of them in there. Also, for those who don't know, uh, you can press R or middle mouse click on uh, your keyboard or mouse to organize your inventory. If it's a bit of a mess, it will just organize it nicely. Uh, just a nice little trick to have. And there we go. We'll pull that out again. Uh, and we should be able to pull one more ingot out, I think. And that should get us 20 copper, which will be very nice indeed. Uh, make sure you don't. Make sure you have enough to fill this basin. Otherwise, you are pretty much wasting stuff because you can't take it out once it's in. Uh, but anyway, we have now got our second block, which allows us to get our 20 bronze. Now we're going to need our hammer. Do they not stack? You should you should stack. Wait, what? <laughs> Why is that thermal foundation? What? <laughs> We've got two different types of bronze on us. That is crazy. I think I think Tinker's Constructor must not have a block version of bronze. That's real weird. Nevertheless, we can make them all into plates, like so. And we actually got one extra somehow. But then we only need to make ten of those. And then we're probably going to need a new hammer at some point in this episode because we need to do a quite a bit of hammering. And then the next thing is, of course, these coils, which are made using iron and copper cables, uninsulated copper cables being made using wire cutters and copper plates, copper cutters being made using iron. So we're going to need a few more of these plates, three to be precise, and then one, two, three with two iron at the bottom. That gets us the wire cutters, which we're going to have to use on copper plates like so. We need uh, 24 of those wires. You get two, so we need 12 plates, which means we need 24 copper. No, we got one too few copper. One. We're missing one piece. Oh, that is terrible. That is absolutely terrible because that is going to get us two. And then we need one more plate to get us those last two copper cables to get us that final one. Do I have a piece of copper hiding out in one of these chests? I do not. That is absolutely. Uh, why are you slowing? Why are you going? Why? Why are you going down? Why? 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 
Do we not have enough power for this thing? I don't like the look of this. Do we need even more power pumping into this? Oh, we might have to make a few more survivalist generators just to push this over the edge. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go away, guys. I'm going to try and find one more piece of copper, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so now we've got some more copper. I found quite a few ingots in a spider spawner cave, as well as quite a few uh, ores on the way down, which gives us quite a bit in the smeltery here. Let's just go ahead and pull out a block. Uh, and while it's doing that, we can actually go ahead and make ourselves one more plate using our hammer like so, which allows us to get two more cables like that, which allows us to make our final coil like so. And then the last bit that we can make before we get uh, the, the assembly table is the electronic circuit, which requires a couple more of these insulated copper cables. So again, we're gonna have to make quite a few more of these. We do need six. So one, ooh, that's not right. All our hammer has broken. So, oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Thankfully, we do have some creosote oil. So, making another hammer shouldn't be too big of a deal. I completely forgot that the uh, the whole thing... Is it? Is this right? Let's have a look. To make a hammer, we need the treated sticks, right? And then to make the treated sticks, we either need creosote oil or the other thing. Is it called a forge hammer? It is. Yes, we need treated sticks which can be made by treated wood, which is planks surrounding that. Okay, let's get a few more planks, and then let's get ourselves some treated wood, and then let's use that treated wood. There we go. That's a lot of treated sticks. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, we'll put that back down. Let me quickly dump some of this junk that we've got away into here for now, like so. Uh, we've already got some iron on us. That is good. Let's make another hammer. Thank you very much. Let's make some more of these plates. That gets us three. We need three, I think, because that lets us get six cables, which we can then combine up with our rubber, which is now done. Uh, if we do something like this, boom, and then surround it like so. I think that works. Apparently not. That's fine. We can just do it the old-fashioned way and get six like that. That is completely okay. Let's take you, and I think think we should be pretty much good to go. We'll replace that with the ingot cast and pull the rest of the copper out as needed. I did add yet another survivalist generator to this. It did get a little bit higher. It still seems to not quite be getting there, which is so annoying. Oh, we need to make the, um, the, the actual processor itself here. So let's have a look. We need to get uh, one more iron plate is all we need. So I'll put you up there and do that. Get an iron plate. And then we'll combine that up with the rest of the stuff, redstone, redstone, and cables. And that gets the electric circuit. So, we now have everything apart from this. We need eight more of these uh, iron plates. I can go ahead and make those, I guess, whilst we wait. That's eight. And now we just got to wait for this thing to finish. This thing has taken flipping forever. It doesn't show any sign of getting there. It's still flickering. I think we still yet might need more. Now... Uh, if we go back and look at this book, look at tech tree, look at power options, another one that it suggests is the hobbyist steam engine, uh, which produces 20 redstone flux per tick. So let's have a look. Hobbyist steam engine. Let's type in steam engine. This guy over here. What do we need for this? For this, we need two golden gears, three gold. This looks a lot easier. I think this uses uh, power a lot more. I think it uses power a lot quicker, should I say. Uh, but let's try and make that real quick because uh, that... Might be a better way of going. Golden copper, I don't think, makes anything. But uh, just to be on the safe side, we will start pulling that copper out so we don't waste too much of it. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, the hobbyist steam engine does require water as well as fuel to run. So we're going to need two separate uh, sets of, I guess, fuel in there to make that thing work. But that should be fine. Okay, that didn't combine, which is nice. Let's pull all that gold out. Not like that. Let's pull all that gold out in gear form, Isaac. Oh, my goodness. We need to get one more gold here. That's fine. We'll throw that in there. One gold. Actually, we need three gold anyway, don't we? So, yeah, let's pull out one, two, three of that and get three more smelting up inside. Did I put the uh, other cast away? I've got to stop putting that away. I need a chest near my, uh, my thing here so I can... Uh, I don't need to pull golden ingots out, you fool, Isaac. We've got golden ingots. Ah! <laughs> We've got golden ingots all over the place. I don't need to make them in the smeltery. All right, let's try that again. Let's put you there. Let's pull out our first golden gear. Okay, way too much derping around with gold in the smeltery later. I think we have everything it takes to make our hobby steam engine. So I will take this final golden gear, and we should be able to get rid of this junk here, which we can't do because our inventory is way too full. Uh, but we should be able to make a hobby steam engine like so. And let's see if I can get this to power that machine. 
Cool. Right, I'm going to move this for now because I know as well that the uh, the engines from forestry usually, or railcraft even, wow, uh, usually require some kind of redstone signal to get them to work. So we're probably going to need to put a lever behind it, which is fine. We will go ahead and put you on the back like so. Then I think we need water, which is going to turn into steam via the use of fuel. So I'll put the fuel in there. We'll grab the water and put that in as well. And then if we turn this on... It's going to start burning through that wood at a fairly fast pace, but that's fine because we've got quite a bit of the stuff. And it should start producing steam and therefore power, which, to be fair, 5, 10, 50, this should produce as much power as all four of these combined. Now, obviously, the reason why this is so much cheaper than these is that these are so fuel efficient. Obviously, he says that as it has no more fuel in it. But if I put that in there, 30 minutes, 20 seconds is a long time for fuel to last inside this generator. Whereas in here, you can see it's burning through the wood pretty quickly. But is actually generating redstone flux and hopefully should get this guy to completion. Oh my goodness, what? What? Oh, oh wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> no. Okay, I don't think that this needed to be all the way full up. I put four diamonds in instead of five. We needed five diamonds and I put four in and that's why it took forever. Oh, anyway. Oh, that's annoying. Nevertheless, we did get this hobby steam engine out of it, which is good, because this thing is so much better than all of these. It does take a little while to ramp up. It needs to heat up before we can get to its max output, which the book states is 20. I can't get it above 16, but we can now go ahead and finally make the flipping electron tubes. We could have probably made that a lot sooner. I, I, I was sure it didn't need to be full up, but hey, we can make a laser. I'm only going to make one for now because I don't think there's much point in making more than one. Uh, and then I will go ahead and pick this up as well. Let's just drop this stick for the time being as well as this cobblestone. And then let's go ahead and put you down somewhere next to this laser. We'll put you there. We'll put you there. We'll turn this thing on. Here we go. Oh, that was such a massive just derp on my part. We'll put some fuel in. And then this should start to, to speed up again, start producing power, and everything will be good. And finally, we can put some redstone and some iron in there and make an iron chipset. It does require 200,000 redstone flux in order to get this thing up and running. Look at this. If we look in here and in here and in here, 200,000 redstone flux. This thing produces 16 per tick, which granted there are 20 ticks per second, so it's times by 20 per second, so a fair bit, but... It is going to take a real long time, <laughs> like a really, really, really long time for this to get anywhere. And I think one thing that I might also do is just kind of take all of these and surround the laser with these as well, just to get as much power as we possibly can into this thing. I guess we could put one in the bottom if we really wanted to. We'll put you there and you there. That's going to be producing like what, 5, 10, 15, maybe 30 at max if we get this up to 16, 31. But it's going to take a while, guys. So I'm going to sit here. I'm going to wait for this to finish because I'm not going to end this episode until we get the metal farmer. I need to have it. We've come too far. And there we go. We did it. We've got ourselves an iron chip set. Finally, we can go ahead and surround that iron chip set with some iron plates like so. That gets the basic machine casing, which we can then use to make ourselves the rest of the stuff here. Uh, we didn't let us shift click it in, but we can do it by hand. And it feels even better. There we go. The metal farmer is made. It is done. Oh, that took way too long. It took way, way too long. But uh, I enjoyed the challenge of making all that stuff. If you enjoyed the video, guys, be sure to hit that like button. It really does help out a lot. Leave a comment down below. That helps out too. And I will see you guys next time.